So what we're talking about today is just recording audio into Pro Tools. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually start with recording audio into Pro Tools just to show you uh, how we can do it, how easy it is. And then we're gonna go back and do it step by step by step and talk about all the moving parts that are happening in here. So first of all, I'm just gonna make a new Pro Tools session here. Uh, use a command N or control N on a Windows machine just to pull up this new dialog. And I'm gonna call this one uh, audio. I'm gonna try to spell it right. I'm not doing a very good job of that. Audio recording and then uh, 2101 W12 A1. All right. So down here in the bottom, uh, all the stuff that we need to make sure we got set up. So we got our wave file, we got our 44.1 kilohertz, we got our 24 bit, we got our AI IO settings, a stereo mix. And again, we're going to talk about those IO settings later. Interleaved, very important. Hit create, and now we are good to go, and it shows us a blank screen. Here, this is our mix window, and if we flip that with the uh, command equals key, this is our edit window right there. So that's how we do this. Now, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a new audio track. Command shift in, audio mono, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna call this one counting, because that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna count. Now, I wanna count, make sure I'm counting in time. So I'm gonna make a new click track. I'm gonna go here to track, create click track and it's going to create a click track there. I'm just going to go ahead and turn that down a little bit and let's slow the tempo down. I don't like to count too fast. So I'm going to slow that down to, let's slow it down to 90 BPMs and put that up like that. And now uh, I just want to check my IO settings here. So I've got my internal external microphone set up here. You can see I've got all my different inputs here. So external microphone one, that's, that's the microphone that you're hearing me speak through. So I'll go ahead and, um, if I want to hear it, check, check one, two. two. So, so now you should, should be able, able to hear, hear me twice. twice. I, I can, can hear myself. Let me just, just double check, check that y'all are hearing me. I, well, that's not very conclusive. Yeah, yeah I, I think you're hearing me. That should be coming through Pro Tools. Tools. Great. Okay, so I'm gonna re I don't need to hear it though right now. Uh, there, let me mute that. Okay, cool. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit go. There's my microphone. Sweet, I'm gonna go ahead and hit the record key. Now the record on Pro Tools is Command Spacebar or F12 or the three key on a numeric keypad. So I have a numeric keypad, so that's what I'm gonna be using. And I'm just gonna go ahead and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There we go. And Let's go, go ahead, ahead and turn that off. Let's zoom in on this. And I can get rid of all this stuff in the beginning. Just hit delete there, just to get rid of all that silent stuff in the beginning. Let's hit go. I can mute this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Great, and that's me counting. And that's as easy as it is to record into Pro Tools. There you go. That's our that's our result. Our kind of goal there is to get to that point where we're doing that. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to back up and we're going to talk about all the steps that we need in order to get there because that's like just me doing it because I've already got everything set up, right? But what we need to do is we need to make sure that you have everything set up on your machine. And there's a whole bunch of different pieces to this puzzle. Some of them actually include going outside of Pro Tools. Now, I am going to say for people who are like, you know, for y'all here in the class, oh, Brian, what is up, dude? Brian, you and I need to talk at uh, during Zoom. So let's, let's, uh, let's have a little talk during Zoom. All right, man? Cool. Uh, so, um, what was I saying? What I'm gonna what I'm gonna say is that what what I'm the way I'm going over this is strictly for Mac computers, the Mac OS. This does not apply to Windows OS. Like very little of it does because there's some things in here that I'm talking about that's very Mac specific, and I don't know that there's a Windows equivalent, for example, to the Pro Tools aggregate device. I know um, Windows has a thing called ASIO for all which kind of allows you to do something similar, I think. But like I've mentioned before, uh, like I mentioned before, I don't use Windows. I only know about ASIO for all because I've done a little bit of research in it for my students and stuff, but I am not an expert by any means. So let's just be aware of that as we move forward. And if you have Windows specific questions, just understand that 
I, I might or may not be able to help you. I know there are some people in the class that can help you. So we'll be, uh, we'll, you know, maybe help, you know, point you in their direction if, you know, if they're willing to help out. So let's go ahead and, and backtrack this. So first of all, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and delete all this stuff that I just did. I'm gonna delete all this stuff. So we're gonna start with a clean slate here. I'm gonna get rid of this audio file in here as well. Uh, clear, yep. I'm just right clicking on all this stuff here. I'm just gonna delete the whole thing. Just delete it off my disk. I don't need it anymore. Okay. So first things first, when you are setting up your audio in Pro Tools, what you need to do is, let's go over here and consult our notes. We need to talk about the Pro Tools playback engine. The playback engine is how you're playing back your audio, how you're recording your audio. It is what you're listening to when you're using Pro Tools. Every audio and every uh, DAW has uh, this like audio settings area. Everything that you do that does audio has an, a settings area where you can set your interface that you're using. Now, I, I gotta say that it, we don't really think about it like the headphone jack on your computer is an audio interface, but it is an audio interface. It's just a very basic audio interface that's just built into your computer. So it's easy to not think about it as an audio interface. It's just a headphone jack. You just plug it into the computer. But once you're using uh, software like Pro Tools, Logic, Ableton Live, like professional level stuff. You've got to start thinking like a professional and thinking about uh, what your computer's actually doing and like all the things that it's doing. It's a lot to keep in your head. It's not like I'm constantly thinking about this, but um, it is It is in the back of my mind. And I, the more you understand about this, the more it will make your life easier when things go wrong. And believe me, things will go wrong, right? They, they always do. I was watching a YouTube video last night about like uh, Instagram stories and stuff. And the guy was like, he was uh, he was saying that he had, he had made an Instagram story every day for like five years. And he really focused on it. And what he realized, one of the main takeaways from it was that the more you do it, the better you get. One, which is, yes, so important. And two, the the more he did it the more experience he got with it the, the one of the biggest things for him the best things for him was that he was able to work around problems easier and that's really one of the main things that i want you all to understand is that the more you do this the more you're going to be able to work around problems easier the more you're going to understand the stuff the easier it is to fix problems because that's really what you're doing a lot of the times is uh you know you're gonna have to you're problem solving a lot of problem solving so Let's go in here and talk about this audio interface. Uh, all right, so that's under here under setup, playback engine right here, boom. Now in mine, I have my <clears throat> playback engine is set to Pro Tools Aggregate. If I click on this, this allows me to like use Pro Tools with anything that's connected to my computer at the time. And you can see I have a whole bunch of stuff going on here. Let's just take a look at this. I've got my Pro Tools Aggregate I.O., which everybody should have because that's something that Avid just installs in your computer. I have a display port, which is my monitor. I have the HD Pro Webcam 6C920, which is my webcam, which also has a microphone and a, I guess a speaker in it. I'm not sure if it has a speaker or not. Then I have my external microphone, which is what you're listening to me talk through. I have my external headphones, which would, in this Mac Mini that I'm using, is the same port as my external microphone. So when I use like my Bose headphones, they have like a little phone jack on them uh, that's got the three uh, uh, rings on it. And that's for like, you know, if you have headphones that have a uh, microphone built into them for like, uh, tele like uh, cell phones and stuff. Then I got my Mac Mini speakers. My Mac Mini has a speaker built into it. Then I've got the Irian webcam audio, which is a thing that I have to use my phone as a webcam. Then I've got Soundflower, which allows me to route audio through my computer if I want to. Then I've got Rekordbox aggregate device, which is something that Re Pioneer put on there. I'm not sure why it's there. It's something to do with Rekordbox, I assume. App Connect, which is another uh, audio routing uh, software. Then I've got my Universal Audio Thunderbolt, which is, you wanna go sit over there? Go hang out over there, come on. Or not, make up your mind. Sorry, my dog. Go, come on. Don't fall. There you go. Okay. Uh, so I've got my Universal Audio Thunderbolt. The Universal Audio Thunderbolt is my audio interface. That's my main audio interface that I have. Uh, then I've got Zoom Audio Device and I've got Aggregate Device here. Now, the Zoom Audio Device is something that Zoom puts on your computer. 
I'm not exactly sure. I guess that's, I don't know what you would use that for. I don't know why they put that on there. It's only 48, uh, it's only a 48K uh, div interface like software. So it's not really very useful for stuff unless you're doing video. And then the aggregate device is probably something I made that's very similar to the Pro Tools aggregate. So this one, there's a lot of stuff here that you can kind of ignore, but I just, I'm just pointing this stuff out because it's important that when you look at this list of stuff, you kind of know what everything is. It's, it's really important that you understand what is all happening with this. Like, like the, you can look at all these things and say, oh yeah, that's this. Oh yeah, that's this, that's this, that's this, that's this, okay? You're not gonna have nearly as much stuff as I have on your computer, uh, but you might have uh, some of it. You're definitely gonna have, if you're running a Mac, you're gonna have the uh, speakers and the external headphones, and the external microphone. You'll probably have these three things right here. Plus, if you have an audio interface, like a physical interface connected up to your computer. Now, that brings me to another point. Most of these are not physical interfaces. Most of these are software interfaces. And what that means is that nowadays, especially on Mac computers, you can write software that makes your computer think that it's got hardware plugged into it. It's how it works. And so uh, it just makes it... Um, it makes it, you can do more with it. I don't know that it's necessarily easier to use. It just makes it more flexible. Uh, uh, Charlie says multi-console. Yep. All right. So then you have the hardware buffer size. Now the hardware buffer size, that's this right here. Let's just go take a look at this real quick before we talk about the uh, Pro Tools aggregate. The hardware buffer size, the buffer size is how long your computer has to think about stuff. That's this one right here. We're talking about this right here, hardware buffer size. How much time the computer is given to think about things? So let's let's just use an example here. If I say to you, um, I have two people on a train and the train is moving at 60 miles per hour and then somebody throws a ball and the ball is moving at five miles an hour, how fast is it the, the ball and the people are on the train? How fast is the ball moving? And there's formulas that you can figure that out, whatever. I don't know what it is. It's just saying some random math question thing. I would then give you time to think about it. And if you know about questions like that and you know how to answer questions like that, it might take you less time. If you don't know about questions like that, it would take you way more time, right? For me, it would take me forever because I, you know, I don't know how to answer that question really. But the, the point is, if I only give you five seconds to do it, you're going to have to think really fast. Then if I also said to you, hey, can you now juggle these balls? Well, you couldn't juggle the balls and do that question in five seconds or 10 seconds or 20 seconds or a minute. But maybe if I gave you a half hour, I'd said, hey, I want you to do this and I want you to juggle the balls and I want you to cook me some food and I want you to wash the dishes. Then you could kind of do all that stuff within that time frame if I gave you a half hour. But if I only gave you five seconds to do it, you couldn't do it all. And this is like what the, ag the, the hardware buffer size is, is doing. The hardware buffer size says, hey, you're gonna do all these things and you have this amount of space to do it. And you either have a large amount of time or a short amount of time to do it. That's what the buffer size is. The buffer size is kind of like a, uh, a amount of time the computer has to think about things. So. Um, Elan says, what kind of interface do you have? I have uh, right now I just have an Aero, an, uh, a Universal Audio Aero connected up, but I also have an Apollo uh, Twin. That's my main audio interface. Uh, all right, so the buffer size here. So in this case here, let's look at this down here. I have my keyboard controller. The keyboard controller is connected up to my computer, and then my com computer is eventually connected to my speakers. So if I press a key on my keyboard controller, I play the keyboard, that's my action. The computer has the instrument in the computer and that plays the sound. And then we hear the sound, that's the result. So the time from here to here, the time the computer has to think about it, that's the buffer size. And all this time in the middle here between when I actually press the key and when I hear the result, that is called latency. This time between events is called latency. So people will talk about Latency, they'll talk about, they'll say, uh, there's a lot of latency or there's a very little amount of latency. What that means is when I press the key on my keyboard, on my, on my MIDI keyboard, and I hear the sound, how long does that take to happen? And one of the things that's responsible for that is the buffer size. So if we have a large buffer size, it's gonna take more time than a smaller buffer size. Now, this has slightly changed in the last few years. I would say the last like 
uh, three or four years, the programs have started accessing the, utilizing the buffer size slightly differently, including Pro Tools. So we're gonna talk about that in just a minute, but in general, this is what we're talking about here. And it looks like, kind of like this. I, I drew this little graph just to help y'all understand it better. Everything is done in samples. So if I go over here and look at my playback engine, we can see it says samples, hardware buffer size right here, samples. And I have 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1024. Uh, some programs just have a slider that lets you choose different numbers. Pro Tools is set for these numbers right here. And depending on what your audio interface is or whatever you're using, you're going to have different uh, numbers here as well. Some go up higher to bigger numbers. Some uh, don't go down to 32. Some of them stop at 128 or 64. So this is going to change depending on what audio interface you have. So over here, here is the action on this side and the result on this side. Smaller uh, time frame here, smaller number equals a quicker result. So 64 is very fast. 128 is double 64. Uh, 256 is double 128. 512 is double 256. And 1024 is double 512. So smaller equals a quicker result, less processing time, which means you basically have less power for your computer to do things. Your computer is less uh, powerful. But this is better for live performance. So if I'm producing and I'm playing on my instruments or I'm playing live on a stage with a computer, then I want to have a smaller buffer size. But it also means we can use less plugins. There's less plugins that we can use because the computer has less time to do it. So it's like my analogy before when I was saying that um, when I was saying that uh, uh, when I was saying that, sorry, Jane, sorry, Jane, I just saw your question there. Hold on, I'm going to come to your question in just a second. Let me finish this. Uh, when I was saying that, you know, I ask you to do a math question and wash dishes and cook me food and all this stuff. Well, if I give you less time, you could do less of those things. Like maybe you could do all this stuff, but you couldn't cook me dinner, right? So same thing for the computer. If you have a million plugins going on and you have a small buffer size, it just can't do all the things. It just can't do it all in the amount of time. So you're gonna have audio dropouts, you're gonna have problems. But if I have a larger buffer size, a longer time to do these things, it can actually do more stuff. So I can have more plugins, I can have more things happening. I can have heavier plugins, heavy meaning like how much processor intensive each plugin is it can be more processor intensive. So larger, uh, it's a slower result, but it equals more processing power. So it's better for mixing. These larger, long, light, larger sizes here are better for mixing because you can use more plugins and you can have more high quality plugins, but it's not good for live because if you've got more plugins and your computer's doing, doing more work, the time between when you play the key on the keyboard and when you hear the sound it's going to be a longer time frame. You're going to actually hear it. You're going to be like, and it's going to be like, bum, bum. Whereas if I have a faster buffer side, it's going to be bum, bum. You hear my hand clap and you hear when I play the note, when I sing the note with my voice, bum, they're almost identical, bum, 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 right? But if I have a larger buffer size, bum, 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 bum 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 right it's hard to play like that you can't play like that there's too much of a lag so that's what this buffer size is so to go back to Jalen's question here and how many samples should you set it at for a scarlet interface there's no answer for a question like that that's like there's not like a magic number it's it's not like like that's and that's kind of what I'm trying to tell you here is that uh, the smaller sizes, it's, it depends on what you're doing. So if you're doing like live recording or live playing, you want to use a smaller size, like 64, 128, 256. It also kind of depends on what your computer, you know, it, a lot of it, it, well, not a lot of it, but all of it really comes back to your computer and what kind, how fast your computer is. Then 512, 1024, 2056, these sizes are great for mixing. Remember that you can change the buffer size. You have control over that part of the of the, uh, the 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 you know the world your world there. In the beginning, when you're mostly writing and playing, use the smaller buffer size. Later, when you're mixing, change to the larger buffer size. All right. So there's not like a you know just set it and forget it. It really depends on your computer. 
So how do you know when that time comes, when to change it? Like I recommend setting it for the smaller numbers. Like I recommend setting it at 128. 128 is a good buffer size. Hold on, sorry, the dog is being really restless right now. Go back over there and go to sleep. Um, I recommend setting it at 128. 128, I find, is a good balance between latency and power. And how do you know when to crank that up? Well, you know when to crank that up when you start to hear pops and clicks, <laughs> like that kind of stuff. You'll hear what they call audio dropouts, and that's when you change it there. So um, depending on your computer again. So let's just take a look at my computer here. If I go about this Mac. This is a Mac Mini 2018, uh, 3.2 gigahertz processor, Intel Core i7 with 32 gigs of RAM. And uh, this one has, it is a, it's like a, a quad core. I don't know, if I open up Pro Tools, we can see this here in Pro Tools. If I go to syst uh, disk system usage, it's got like 12 CPU cores that Pro Tools accesses. This is incredible on a, such a small machine and such a cheap machine uh, to have this much power. So with my computer here, I can basically set my playback engine to 128 and just leave it there and never change it. I like, I like never have to change from 128 with this computer. Um, the more powerful the computer you have, some of y'all have like, like uh, some of y'all have more modern computers, then the, the lower you can set that hardware buffer size and just kind of forget about it. So that's, that's a really important thing to consider there is that, you know, some people will say, well, yeah, but my friend uses like a, uh, you know, a computer that they got, um, you know, at a garage sale for 300 bucks and they make beats and it sounds good. Yes, you can make beats on a computer that's older and slower and it's totally possible. I've used older, slower computers uh, before just a couple of years ago when I was in um, South Africa working, uh, producing some stuff, doing some stuff over there for BMI, I was using my my laptop from 2009. And that was like, I would say this uh, back in 2017, I think I was there, or 2018. I don't remember when it was exactly. But uh, I was using my laptop from uh, 2009. So the laptop was like eight, eight, eight or nine years old. And it, was, it wasn't great but I could get stuff done. It was, you know, I didn't have to take time and I had to know how to deal with it, but I could get stuff done. You don't need the newest computer. Uh, you just need a computer that's that works well and has good numbers. So for example, nowadays, they got those uh, i chips, the i, i7, i9s. Those are fantastic. Now Mac just, uh, Apple just came out with the M1 chips which are just blowing everybody away in terms of speed and capabilities. So if you buy a newer computer that's got that kind of thing, like you saw my computer has an i7 chip in it, then that's going to, um, this is gonna make your computer more future-proof. So I, I recommend an i7, if you're buying a new computer, I recommend an i7. This doesn't mean if you have like a, like a Jalen, I think uh, we were looking at your computer the other day, it has an i5, that's still gonna do fine. Kick up that RAM, get that, you know, get that extra RAM in there. I've got, you can see I've got 32 gigs of RAM in mine. Get that extra RAM in there and that's gonna help you out a lot um, for making it more future-proof. Cause yours is only a 2017, that's still a, a really good computer. So. The, the better processor you have initially, uh, not necessarily a higher number right here, although if you can get a higher number, go for it, but really it's about the, uh, the chip here, i7, i9s, M1, those chips are amazing. If you have more questions about it, definitely we can talk about it later. But that's the hardware buffer size here. Now, uh, let's just talk about a couple of these other things here. Host engine, uh, optimize for uh, performance at low buffer sizes. You check that box, yes. Um, ignore errors during playback and record, definitely do that. Uh, Pro Tools is the worst about this. Pro Tools is always like stopping and saying, hardware buffer overrun, and you know, please disable some plugins or whatever. Usually just ignore that and hit play again, and then uh, hopefully that'll take care of the problem, but sometimes it causes a problem. And I, if, if it happens, I'll point it out. It doesn't usually happen with my machine but it does happen on slower machines. Minimize additional IO latency. Uh, if you want to, I don't really worry about that because of the UAD audio interface uh, has that kind of stuff built into it. 
Um, and I also don't do a lot of recording here in my studio. I'm, I'm in, well, my studio, my studio, my bedroom. Um, and then dynamic plugin processing. Yes, definitely turn that on. Raheem says my computer is 2014. That's fine. I um I actually for the longest time I was using my iMac that was a 20 uh, 2011 iMac and it was great. The only thing, the only reason why I stopped using it was because it finally just stopped. It didn't turn on one day, and that was actually a known issue with that computer. And it, I had already that was like last year. It was tw uh, well not last year. It was 2019 at the in the fall of 2019, and I had a choice. I had had the computer for uh, eight years, and I was like, I can either pay a lot of money to get the uh, the um, the power fixed on that computer, which would have been you know eight hundred dollars or so, or I could just buy a new Mac Mini. And spend more money, yes, but I, I wanted to get the Mac Mini anyway for traveling because I was traveling to Thailand and stuff like that. So I just went ahead and bought the Mac Mini at that time. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's it's if your computer was good, if it was a good computer in 2014 or 2013 or 2012, whatever, then it should be fine still. If uh, if your computer was, you know, whatever back then, then it's not going to be as good now. It just really depends on what you what you got into when you first got the computer. All right, and we can talk about that more. Dog, come over here. You're, you're making noises. We can talk about that more in Zoom. It's a good conversation to have. We can go and look on the Apple website and stuff like that, or you know, different different companies. Video engine, you do not need this. Don't worry about it. Um, have I grown to upgraded to Mac Big Sur? Wonder if it's saved now. A few months back, I read there were a lot of issues. Do not upgrade uh, to stuff. Um, I I no. Here, look at mine. Mine is. Uh, what am I on? I'm on like I'm like two back. I'm Mojave, Mojave. I don't know how you pronounce that. I'm this one here. Mac OS 10.14 is what I'm at. I always, I never update until I have to update. Until like, until there comes a point where it's like, okay, this is a feature. You need this feature, or you need to update because stuff is like, you know, they're making audio, you know, plugins for that OS. But I never actually update. So, um, Mickey. Just to answer your question there, I, I never, I never update. So I would just hold off. Don't, please, don't buy into the hype. You do not need the latest OS unless there's some reason why you need it. If there's a reason why you need it, then definitely update. But most of the time, you probably don't need it. All right, disk playback cache size. I have mine set <clears throat> really high to eight gigabytes. You can, set, you, I think normal is just what it normally is. But I have mine set to eight gigs. Uh, the reason why is because I have 32 gigs of RAM. Um. So, I you know I just have so much. Oh, Nick says uh, Big Sur isn't uh, uh, currently supported by Pro Tools, but it still works. Yeah, I would hold off unless you need Big Sur, unless there's some other feature like it just works with something else or this or that or whatever. Um, there's no reason. Don't don't like if it works, don't fix it. If it ain't if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Type of thing, right? Don't like you know because Apple's on a, like a yearly update. Why, why do I need a new operating system every single year? I don't. They do to drive their bottom line, which is, you know, cash dollar. But, <coughs> thing happened to your Mac. Uh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Mm. Gotta get those latest emojis, yeah. <laughs> you had to update it just to be able to use the Pro Tools. Okay, so if you have to, uh, yeah. If you have to update, um, to use Pro Tools or whatever, then you have to. You can't fall too bar far behind. Like I've definitely had to update in the past because of certain plugins or whatever. So you can't fall too far behind. But at the same time, you don't like don't don't buy into the hype. Is basically what I'm saying. Don't don't buy into the hype. All right. Um, so your disk playback cache size. Uh, mine is set to a huge number here. Um, just because this is for RAM and I've got so much RAM on my computer, 32 gigs, so I feel like I can spare 8 gigs for stuff. And I never even, I, I never come near needing that. So, uh, like I don't have any sessions that are over a gigabyte. That's basically what that's saying. How much it's going to load. So, so as you can see, you know, we talked about yesterday, I really recommend more RAM, as much RAM as you can shove into your machine. Alright, so now... 
Where are we with this stuff here? Do, 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 do. Wait, get out of here, system usage. Do not need you. Hold on one. Oh, okay, there we go. Okay, so let's back it up here a little bit and talk about Pro Tools Aggregate. Now, Pro Tools Aggregate device. This is one of our options. If we go back up here to our setup playback engine and we go in here and you see all my different options I've got here. Let's go to Pro Tools Aggregate IO, right? Well, this is one of those things, like I said before, it's actually a piece of software that the computer sees as hardware. The computer sees the Pro Tools Aggregate IO as an audio interface, but it is not actually an audio interface. Now, in order to set up the Pro Tools Aggregate IO, we have to go outside of Pro Tools, and I'm gonna go into my audio MIDI setup. Now, let me just show you how to get there. If I go to my Finder, I'm gonna open up a new window here, I'm gonna to go to my Applications folder, and in here, I'm gonna to go to my Utilities, and in here, I'm gonna to go to my audio MIDI setup, and if we wanna see that there, it's under uh, my, my, my Mac, which is for some reason called this weird name, and then Dodge, which is my hard drive name, <clears throat> and the application. It's not a reference to, I just realized that's not a reference to cars, Dodge cars, Dodge Ram, all that stuff. It's a reference to a character from a book. <clears throat> Applications and then utilities. And that's where my audio MIDI setup is. So in here, uh, I can open up my audio MIDI setup. And the audio MIDI setup is actually two windows. And this is for your, this is, this is part of your OS for Mac. And it's got two windows in here. I've got my MIDI studio, which shows me anything that's connected up to my computer, uh, which is lying to me right now because I do not have a Euphonics MIDI device connected up, but maybe my computer thinks I do. Um, I do have an Arturia Mini Lab Mark II connected up. Okay, but you can see all the stuff that at one point was connected uh, is up here. And if I had it connected, it would be, it would be lit up here. But what we wanna pay attention to right now is uh, audio devices and Pip says um, is the normal setting on the cache size is automatic optimization. I think uh, Rondell, I think that is yes. I think the normal setting is just automatic optimization. It's not going to be too high. It's not going to be too low. I recommend um, taking control over it though. If you know how much RAM you have in your computer, I recommend setting a specific specific set for it. Uh, just so you know how much control you have over it. And then Pip says, does IO just mean input output? Yes, just means in out. Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's go over here and look at this as my audio in, uh, devices. And over here on the left, we're gonna see all the stuff that we saw on that list before, display port, webcam, external microphone, external headphones, Mac mini, uh, Irian webcam, which is weird that it's got an audio thing. Huh, I didn't expect that. Uh, Soundflower, two channels, 64 channels. Uh, which is Soundflower is actually really cool. We'll talk about that more when we talk about sampling and stuff like that. Then we got my Pro Tools aggregate IO. We got Record Box aggregate IO, which I could probably get rid of. I'm just gonna get rid of that because I don't I don't feel like I want that one. And then uh, my Zoom audio device. Not even sure why that's a thing. Uh, App Connect, which is part of my loopback. And then I've got my aggregate device, which is something that I probably made. Are you gonna come sit on my lap? Does that not look inviting? Whatever, fine, be that way. Uh, the dog is like, come on, stop being indecisive. There we go, all right. The dog is like, all right, now there you go. Now it's time to be comfy, comfy, yes, okay. Everybody wins, I get a dog on my lap and the dog gets a lap. All right, so this aggregate device here is something I had set up uh, oh, I know I had that set up for, okay, I don't need that, yeah. If I need it, I'll just set it up again. All right, and you can see here, I just like hit the plus or minus key down here to add more devices, but let's go ahead and look at this Pro Tools Aggregate IO. This is something that Avid installs for you. Uh, it's not, if you can, you can always make your own aggregate device, but they went ahead and installed one for you. Um, Oh, the Zoom audio allows you to share audio when doing screen share. Oh, it's that broken thing that never works. I see. Right. Ha, 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 ha. Um, maybe. Okay. So I just, I guess I have to set up things to go to the Zoom audio. Interesting. I, I didn't realize that. That's whatever. Okay. So I guess it's their way of like making things work, 
quote unquote work. All right, so over here we have in my Pro Tools aggregate IO, all the things that are in this list should also show up in here because what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow me to connect multiple devices at the same time. So, let's go ahead and look at our notes. This is what here, this Pro Tools aggregate says, this can combine any audio interface you have connected to your computer. So if I have a headphone out and a microphone in, which is what you might have on a laptop, for example, these are seen as two separate devices by your uh, Mac OS, so and also by Pro Tools. So then the Pro Tools aggregate device, what you do is you check the box next to each one of these, and this allows you to be able to record your voice and listen to your headphones at the same time through the microphone built into your laptop. So in order to do that, if you want to hear them, if you want to do everything at the same time, you have to have that selected. So if we go over here, we can see that I've got mine. I've got my Universal Audio uh, Thunderbolt set up uh, so that that's checked. And then I also have my external headphones checked and I also have my external microphone checked. So now I can use all three of these things to get inputs and outputs working with my computer with uh, Pro Tools. And that's what we do. Now over here on the right hand side, uh, it tells you how many inputs and outputs there are. And then here it says drift correction. Now drift correction, basically what that means is that, um, you know, y'all talked about uh, sample rate and stuff like that. And sample rate is like how many times a second your computer is taking a snapshot of that audio. Well, if you have multiple devices that are converting analog to digital, those devices are all taking snapshots. And what the drift correction tries to do is it tries to line it up so they all take snapshots at the exact same time, which is going to make your audio sound better in theory. Now, in reality, you have to have ridiculously amazing ears to be able to hear that difference. Um, but the theory is that it will sound better. The reality is, uh, unless your ears are just phenomenal, good luck hearing it. Um, I went into a studio once with uh, a guy, his name was Ariel Bergeau, and he's a he's a, a mix engineer for like hip hop and, and now house music and stuff like that. And he works with some really big people. He's a really good mix engineer, super nice guy. Uh, he works, I think he's in Jersey now, uh, but he was in Queens and then he was up, up in uh, Harlem for a while at um, the studio that Just Blaze was working out of. He's been like Grammy nominated. I don't know if he's actually won a Grammy, but at this point, probably. He's amazing. Anyway, I was in his studio a while back because uh, I got, used to go and do some stuff uh, when I worked for IK Multimedia and I'd travel around and do some stuff with him and he's a super nice guy. So we hit it off and and um, I was in his studio once and he was showing me some stuff because you can buy this thing called a word clock that does this drift correction. It kind of links up all your digital devices. And he was playing me stuff and he was like playing me audio that he'd recorded with the, this is a, this word clock device was like a $5,000 piece of gear. And he was playing me stuff that he had done with that and stuff that he had done without it. And when and the stuff he had done with it, the vocals he recorded with it, he was like, you hear how much cleaner it is? And then the stuff he would record without it was like, you hear how much like, it's like a little bit dirtier. And I was just like, I, I do not hear it. So either my ears are broken, which could be, or, uh, or also, or maybe a combination of his ears are just phenomenal. So my point is that uh, if you never buy one of these things, you'll be fine. I have friends who are Grammy nominated, you know, producers and people like that, other people who are just like as high up uh, in different genres and stuff and they, uh, they don't have these things, so. Um, so, but definitely check the box, drift correction. It doesn't hurt to check that box. So now once we go over here, we're gonna go in here to our playback engine and just make sure that you have that set up. Yes, good. If you change it, it's gonna say, selecting this playback engine will automatically save and close your session. The session will be reopened when you are done changing settings. Are you sure you want to proceed? If you wanna change the setting, hit yes. It's just gonna save it, close it, and then you change your settings and it's gonna reopen it. Okay, cool, all right. Next up, uh, and that, that's actually pretty much it. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make a new track. Let's just go over here to our preview and
All right, so we're gonna skip the import audio stuff for a second here. Yeah, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna make a new track. Command Shift N, I'm gonna make a mono track because I wanna record mono. Remember, most of the time you're gonna record mono. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. Uh, hit go, there we go. I'm gonna rename the track. We'll call it counting because that's what we were doing before. And now in here, if I, either window works, doesn't matter which window I'm in, if I wanna go to this window or this window, and we have an I.O. section here, the input and the output here. The input is on top, the output is on the bottom. The input is where you're recording that audio from. So in this case here, it's going to be an external microphone. That's going to be my microphone I have on my lapel here. Boom. And the output is where it's going to go to. Now, you always usually want it to go to the one that has your speaker right here. They have a little icon here for your speaker. The main one's usually it, but you have all these options, especially once you're using that Pro Tool aggregate I.O., you're going to have a lot of options here. Just use the main output and also make sure you always set up a master fader. I didn't have that master fader set up earlier because I was just doing like a real quick uh, demonstration for y'all. But usually you want to have this master fader uh, set up. There you go, there's that. And let's go take a look at our notes. So we have some notes to look at here. There we go. So the playback engine, track input settings, the IO is on top here. The uh, all this stuff here, we're not gonna we're not gonna worry about. It all. I just want to point this out here. Just it's just got everything on your track listed for you right here. Okay, so if you're wondering what anything is, there it is right there. You got your automation, group editing, pan knob, input, all this stuff. We're gonna talk about those buttons in just a second here. Track type, all that stuff there. So one last thing, just always, always, always make sure you are using an audio track. You cannot record onto a aux track, and if you want to use an instrument track. Uh, you cannot record audio onto that. That's only for MIDI. So, um, all right. Let's take a look at these little buttons here. Uh, zoom in. Whoops. There we go. So over here on the left-hand side, we've got our record button. Then we have our input monitor button. Then we have our solo button and our mute button. The input monitor button, if I click this, check, check one, two. two. Now we can hear my voice through Pro Tools. This button right here is useful if you want to if you just want to play audio through an audio track, but you don't actually want to record onto the audio track, you just want to play the audio through it or just check the signal or something, that's what the I is for. The I stands for input monitor. Um, the record button is when you actually want to record. And usually when you click it, it's going to automatically input monitor. So we're going to hear it when we're doing it. The, the difference is with these two here is that this one, if I'm recording stuff, this any track that's record armed, which is what that little red button is there, record enabled, any track that's record armed will record when I hit the record button. But any track that's rec uh, that's only says I will not actually record when I hit the record button. So in order to hit the record button in Pro Tools, you have to have at least one track uh, record armed. All right, solo, solos out that track. If there's a whole bunch of tracks and I just want to hear the one track, solo does that. And then mute will actually mute the track. So uh, if I don't want to hear that track, I mute it. It just turns that track off. Solo and mute, you probably talked about in mod one. I can't imagine you did not talk about them in mod one. Great. Uh, all this other stuff here, we'll talk about this uh, another time. We're not going to talk about it right now. Um, the only thing I'm just going to talk about is the, the playlist here. We're going to talk about those in just a second. But for now, we're just going to deal with the wave, uh, just going to do everything with waveform. And if, you're, if your track, you know, if, you're, if your um, audio track ever says anything other than waveform, just put it back to waveform for right now. That's, what you, that's, that's all you really need to know about that. All right, so now, once we have that stuff set up, I hit the I button, just check, make sure, yes, one, two, we can hear that I'm s talking. So we're good to go there. Awesome. Okay, cool. So the next thing I want to do is if we're doing any kind of assignment or, you know, whenever you're doing anything that you're, you want to do timing wise, I, I recommend always do it with a click track. So to create a click track, go up here to track and go create click track. Boom. I'm going to move it up to the top here. And here's my click. If you want to change the sound of your click track, because the sound of the click, a lot of them are, I don't like them very much. So you just open it up by clicking on it here. 
And if you don't see that stuff, you can also always go over here to your uh, mix window. You'll see it in the mix window, or just make sure you click on this box right here, and it'll let you show you what you're looking at here on the edit window. Open it up, and I can change my sounds right here. You have two clicks. You have click one and click two. Click one is for your downbeat. Click two is all your other beats. So click one, and I can set these up for this type of stuff. I can set up for shakers and all these things. They don't sound amazing. Um, they, they sound like metronomes. So just be aware that, you know, that is horrible sounding. Right, that's a little bit less horrible. Right, and then, and then you can also set different tempos down here. So put it back on this one. Well, why are you not? Oh, I gotta turn something. Oh, follow me. I gotta turn that off, and then there we go. There we go. And I can just set this to like that. You can set up different things in here is basically what I'm what I'm trying to tell you. All right. Cool. Let's put that back to All right, cool. Maybe a little bit better, actually. I kind of like that one. Let's save that. Save settings. There you go. And I'll show you about saving settings and all that stuff. So what's the M button for? Mute. The M button mutes it. It just basically turns it off so you don't hear that track anymore. All right. So we got this here. So now in Pro Tools, let's go back over to our notes and go back up here real quick. We have different record modes. We've got normal record mode, loop record mode, and quick punch. So the thing with Pro Tools is that you must hit the record button before you start playback in Pro Tools. In normal record mode, if you do not hit that, uh, do not hit that record button, you cannot hit it later. So let's say, for example, I've got this set up for recording. I'm gonna mute my voice so we don't hear it. And I hit go, it's playing. Now if I go over here and I try to hit the record button, see I'm clicking on it here, it's not going to actually uh, let me hit this button here. It will not let me hit that button. You must hit the button before you actually start doing anything. So I gotta turn the record button on, which gets it ready to go. Sorry, I've got like, I don't know what the phone calls are for. And then go like this. And now I'm recording. And if I talk, la 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 la. Right, I'm gonna stop. And if I play this back, and now I'm recording. And if I, talk la 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 right so now if i hit this i button you see what happens it overrides what's on the track so i can no longer hear the track we're not hearing the track at all we're just hearing me and the dog okay if i turn this off now you can hear me through and this now mic. i'm recording and if i talk la 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 so that I overrides whatever's on the track. You can't hear them both at the same time, which is different because uh, some DAWs do allow you to uh, input monitor at the same time as you are recording. It just depends on your DAW. Like Ableton Live allows you to do both at the same time. I had to be careful because yesterday I kind of burned my tongue from drinking the tea too fast. I was too excited about my tea yesterday. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and <clears throat> let's go back over here. So <clears throat> that's normal record mode. Loop record mode. Uh, so loop record mode, you gotta set up your loop points and then hit the record button before you hit play. So let's just see, do I have a, yeah. So I've got a little thing over here for loop record over here. Loop record allows you to set your in and out points on the timeline to record a specific section of the song over and over again. So what I can do is I can say, okay, I wanna record bar like this two and three just one bar right here over and over and over again so i'm gonna set that up i'm gonna go up here i'm gonna right click on my record button and set it for loop record like that boom so i'll just take a look at that i right click and it allows me to select my different ones so loop record 
and I turn this on, I'm gonna mute it so I don't hear myself and hit record. Now it's gonna record in a loop. Hey, yeah, it's recording in a loop. Cool. Yeah, you can hear my dog. My dog is really cute. I'm really tall. Y'all can't tell because I'm just in a chair. But if you saw me in real life, you'd be like, whoa, Tony, you're very tall. That's what I'm talking about. I know, it's really fascinating stuff, isn't it? But I need to record something, right? All right, there we go. So, <clears throat> uh, I um, Logic does also, yeah, this Logic and Pro Tools, like I said yesterday, Logic and Pro Tools are basically the same. This All the stuff that you're talking about right now um, applies to Logic as well. So, um, oh, and you're talking, you're talking about the I button? Yes, that's actually different. Yeah, Logic, uh, the I button also allows you to input monitor over the top of a track. Yep, it does. Okay, so now let's just take a look at this. So, look, what, let's just see what happens. That was the shortcut for uh, turning that uh, loop record is option L. There we go. I always forget what that is. That's why I wrote it down on my notes. So, look, let's just see what happens. So, if I hit play, turn this clip off towards something, right? All right, there we go. Towards something, right? All right, there we go. Okay, towards something, right? All right, there we go. Awesome, super annoying. But it's not just recorded that one little part. Actually, what it did was it recorded one long audio file, but we're only seeing that one part. So if we wanna see the whole thing, what I can do is I can take this and drag it over here to the right and then trim back to the left. Let me just drag it over so I can keep trimming back. There we go, there's the beginning. And now I can play the whole thing. Now it's gonna record in a loop. Hey, yeah, it's recording in a loop. Cool. Yeah, you can hear my dog. My dog is really cute. I'm really tall. All right, there we go. We don't need to hear me talking about nothing again. But you see what my point is. My point is that even though it was just this one little part right here, it actually recorded this whole big long audio file. And how do I see it? I'd click and drag it to the right and then trim it back to the left because I need to expose all that stuff because what it's doing is it's just showing you the latest loop of what you recorded. And you actually want to see all the stuff you had recorded previously because remember when we trim, this is the last stuff we recorded and this stuff back here is the earliest stuff we recorded. If you're not getting it, if you don't understand it, my advice is try it. Record a bunch of stuff, drag it, around and try trimming it around and that will help you to understand it. Some of the stuff is like, it's hard to understand until you actually uh, do it. And that's, I recommend you do it. You just kind of do it. Okay. When did you, when would you use this most effectively? Use it, use it all the time when you're recording stuff. Um, if I'm recording like, uh, like let's say I'm recording a verse. I'm, I'm by myself in the studio. I got like two bars here, here. Let's do this. Let's, um, here, I'm going to just save this real quick. I'm going to get rid of all this stuff here. Hold on. All y'all get on it. Anyhow, I'm going to delete all y'all from the disk. I'm gonna, we'll talk about that another time. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Hold on. Also, let me get rid of all these playlists. It, it, I have a setting set up here, and it's, uh, it's, it's actually creating all these playlists. Okay. So here, I'm going to save this so we can stop where we were and come back. And I'm going to close this out, and we're going to open up our lab from yesterday. All right, so we got this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert some time into everything. And again, this is something we'll talk about uh, later on. Let's uh, insert um, eight bars from start. Start is gonna be at 13. And we'll insert uh, uh, seven, 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 six, six bars. Cool. And we'll just take all this stuff here. Did I do that wrong? I think I did that wrong here. We're gonna do it like this. Move that over one more. Doesn't matter. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, that's what, okay. Okay, I'm just gonna move this over again like that. There we go, and one more of these. Okay, cool. So I got this now, and so my song, it does this.
Alright, so we can hear this. <laughs> Elon, <laughs> you're funny. Pro Tools is dope. I think I'm done with FL. Uh, yeah, I mean, FL is good for programming drums and stuff like that. There's a lot of really cool things about FL that people like about it. Don't forget those. But at the same time, for editing audio, there's nothing Nothing beats Pro Tools. Even Ableton Live. Pro Tools is so much easier for editing audio. If you're, if you're recording audio, editing audio, stuff like that, Pro Tools is uh, the GOAT. <clears throat> way better than, even better than Ableton Live, and I love Ableton Live. I will make beats all day long in Ableton Live, but if I was doing engineering and editing audio and stuff like that, then I'm working in Pro Tools. All right, so now let's uh, let's just take a look at this. So what I wanna do, let's say that I got this here. Let's, uh, let's drop the drums out right here and put the drums back in and drop them out right back here again. And over here, let's take the percussion out here and the, let's take out the bass right here. So I'm just kind of doing like a quick little arrangement of this and the guitar part here. Let's uh, take this guitar loop and just do that with it. Cool, let's put a filter on these drums. Doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. Let's put the, uh, this filter comes with it. So this, uh, this is a good little filter, vintage filter here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little automation on here. Let's make this a little bit funky. Uh, enable, there we go, turn the resonance down. And the cutoff is up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put a little automation on here. Like this. There we go. Awesome. And we'll do the same thing with uh, this one here. Oh, oops, uh, it's a stereo. It wouldn't copy over because it's a mono track and a stereo track. So let's just do, do that again. We'll just do the same thing. It doesn't take long. I'm gonna put the uh, vintage filter on this one as well. And we'll do that, automate it. And this is some stuff here that we're gonna be talking about later on in the class. I'm just kind of showing you, just to kind of give you an idea about when you would use this stuff since you're asking about this, uh, like this. And we'll put just like this. And actually, let's take you and let's let's do the same thing. Yeah, there we go. Get rid of you, get rid of you. There we go, cool. So now. All right, cool. So let's say that I am in the studio, you're in the studio with somebody and you have all this like this little track set up like this and they have a, a vocal part they need to record but they wanna record it maybe. Maybe they wanna record the vocal here with this music right here. Maybe they don't want that bass. So let's say they want to record it like this, and but you want to put it throughout all this stuff here. So what you might do is you might set this up to loop this part right here, and let's make a little, let's make our audio track here. We'll call this Tony Vocals. And you want to have a vocal part that we record, but then we want to have it go throughout the whole thing, but we don't want to use the whole song to record it. We want to use the part that has the beat loop. And this is a real world situation here. Check one, two, great. So my microphone is working. I'm not going to listen to my microphone. Uh, you should listen to your microphone, but when you're doing it by yourself, it's a little bit, a little bit tricky to do that. So we got this here and what I'm doing is I'm just going to, I'm just going to, uh, I'm just going to record some stuff and let's, I'll just freestyle. And y'all can see my skills. Yo, what's up? Tony on the mic. Yo, Tony on the mic. Getting funky. Yeah, here we go. I got a little tiny dog. Her name is Luna. She looks like a little grumpy old man. She's really fuzzy and she's really cute. And all the people, they always say, yo, that dog is cute. Yeah, my dog is cute. Yeah, she's a little grumpy old man. I got a little grumpy old man lady dog. 
it's 2021, so a lady can look like a man. That's totally cool. My dog, she embraces that entirely, and I love it. I love that about her. Yeah, my little Luna is, she's super cute. She sits on my lap while I teach. Uh-huh, what's up? Yeah, there we go. I got a groove. Cool. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> recorded for posterity all right so we have all that i recorded all that with this with this drum loop going on so i have the rhythm right but what i can do is i can take this and i can drag it over here to the right and i can pull it back like this so now we have all those bars but what's going to happen is i'm going to have the feel of all those drums but we're going to be hearing it let me just put a little uh compression on this uh bad boy what do i have in here that might be good to use Ooh, let's use the slate hold on let's let's do a save as whoops Save as this one here. Boop. Save as? Yeah. Save as uh, vocal. All right. So let's put a little slate on here to get the uh, mix rack. <laughs> I am available for your uh, sessions. As long as you want me to talk about my dog or my, my cat that I used to have. I don't have the cat anymore right now, but... All right, so vocals, here we go. Vocals, air vocals, exciting, ooh, exciting vocals. All right, let's use exciting vocals. There's only two things on for exciting vocals. Okay, whatever. Okay. Yo, Tony on the mic. Cool, getting funky, yeah. Here we go. I got a little tiny dog, her name is Luna. Why are we not, wait, what happened? Oh, my drum loop disappeared. Hold on, did I delete my drum loop? Uh, I don't know how that happened. Okay, whatever. Here, let's take this and move this back over here. And also, this vo vocals are not very exciting. What 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 are you doing to me? Presets here. Yo. Okay, oh, that's fine. Tony on the mic. There we go. We're getting funky. Yeah. Here we go. There we go. I got a little tiny dog. Her name is Luna. She looks like a little grumpy old man. She's really fuzzy and she's really cute. And all the people, they always say, yo, that dog is cute. Yeah, my and dog is cute. So you can hear the rhythm yeah. stays on even when She's I pull the rhythm out here. Old man, I got a little grumpy old man lady dog. It's 2021, so a lady can look like a man. That's totally cool. My dog, she embraces that entirely. And I love it. I love that about her. Yeah, my little Luna is, she's super cute. She sits on my lap while I teach. Okay, and you can see that even though I recorded everything with those drums in, I was able to do have whatever happening in the background because I just recorded the drums in one section and then just, I, not drums, sorry, I recorded the vocals in one section with the drums and then just took them and put them out throughout the whole entire song there. And even with the, you know, and that's a real world situation. I've done that so many, so many times, okay? So that's why we might use this. And the other, the other way we'd use this is when we're doing a vocal. If I have a vocal that I know what I'm going to use. So let's say, for example, that I have this uh, four bar loop here. And I want to record my vocals in here. And I want to record the same thing, but I want to pick the better part for it. And this is actually what we're going to be talking about today. But let me just show you a real world use uh, for this. And we're going to come back and talk about it. We're going to be talking about comping vocals. And uh, for lab. Uh, two and we're actually going to be going deeper into comping vocals uh on in like a week or so uh but i just want to kind of give you like a little idea so you can see where this is going to end up going so i go in here and let's just say um let's go in here and we'll just uh let's say let's set this up here whoops not you let's do a little pre-roll here of one bar there we go my dog is cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. My dog's name is Luna, and she's cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. My her name is Luna, and she's a really little cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. Right, so I just recorded that a whole bunch of times there. And now what I can do is I can actually use this to stack it up on top of itself. So I could go in here and I can say, all right, let's duplicate this. 
Now let's duplicate it a couple times. Let's duplicate it uh, three times. So we have four of them. And now what I could do is I can grab different sections from each one, boop, like that. So we'll do this. And let's do this. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna grab this one from here. I'm gonna copy and cut this out like that. Cut this out like this. And now let's just paste these over here like this, duplicate this. And now I'm going to go ahead and turn these down because I've got it like a bunch of times. And now let's see what that sounds like. Cute y'all, my dog is cute y'all. Her name is Luna and she's really really cute y'all. My dog is cute y'all, my dog is cute y'all. Her name is Luna and she's really really cute y'all. My dog is cute y'all, my dog is cute y'all. Her name is Luna and she's really really cute y'all. My dog is cute y'all, my dog is cute y'all. Her name is Luna and she's really really cute y'all. There we go. My dog is cute y'all. My dog is cute y'all. Her name is Luna and she's really really cute y'all. My dog is cute y'all. My dog is cute y'all. Her name is Luna and she's really really cute y'all. My dog is cute y'all. My dog is cute y'all. Her name. And you see how immediately that just sounds so much better. And um, yeah, it saves you a lot of time stacking. It saves so much time. And this is a really great way to use this. Now, we haven't even talked about playlists and comping and stuff like that, which we're gonna talk about later. But this is what I want you to understand about like looping and stuff like that. This is how it works. <clears throat> so super cool, right, Ty? Yeah, yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And super fast. Like this, and this is like just me sitting here by myself doing this. Uh, so once you're good at this and once you've done it a bunch of times and you're quick with it, you can make that magic happen so, so fast. All right. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, and that's, I mean, so if I, let me just take this one part here and drag it over here real quick. Okay, let's make a copy of it. I'm going to hold down option or alt and drag it over. And if we take a look at this, See, it's all this stuff that I recorded in here, but uh, I'm only using a couple of sections of it like that, right? All the rec stuff we recorded because it's looping, it's actually making one long audio file, but we're only using one little section of it. And so that's, that's really what I wanted to kind of demonstrate there. So uh, loop record records one long audio file, but you only see one section of it. You can use the trim tool to see the entire file. I'm just using the trim tool. And I'm using my smart tool. Remember the smart tool? I'm going in here and I'm, I'm clicking in the middle bottom section for the grabber tool. And here, let me just make that bigger so we can see. And the left hand side over here to trim or the right hand side to trim, right? Or if I wanted to fade it, I can fade up here. If I want to fade over here, I could fade over here. If you want to get rid of your fades, you can just click, click and delete with the grabber tool. Now, one thing I'd also want to point out to you, and this is something I didn't talk about yesterday, but I do want to talk about today. Yesterday, remember, we talked about our edit modes over here on the left-hand side, shuffle, spot, slip, and grid. The two that I use mostly is slip and grid, F2 and F4. But I want to talk about real quick about this thing called a temporary slip mode. Temporary slip mode, what this does is it basically takes see if I move it see how it's snapping to the grid but if I hold down my command key or the control key on Windows I think if I hold that down it turns off the grid mode so it's like what I call a temporary slip mode or just grid mute I don't know what you would do say but it's like temporary I would call it temporary slip mode so here it just I just if I want to just adjust this so like this part here You can hear it in the left hand side a little bit there but so see so see what i did there i just grabbed that one part and i keep my grid on but i'm holding down my command key it's a really really useful little feature there <clears throat> so this kind of brings me doing this here let's just solo these out oh that's uh i got that still turned on cute y'all my dog is cute y'all her name is luna and awesome let me just get a little bit of the beginning here because because i can 
I want that my dog is, right? You know, okay, there we go. And, but we don't want to loop that here. Cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. My dog is cute. Awesome. Oh, and this one. Oh, we need that. Hold on. We need this over here like that. There we go. Cool. Okay, because we were missing that one there. Okay, sweet. Now what I'm going to do is... Cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. My dog is... Better. Okay, so... um couple things one hold on let me just grab the end of this one and put that over here so this is a really good time to use my relative grid what I want to do is I want to take this end part here and stick it over here at this end over here so what I can do is I can just go over here and I just grab that and I'm just gonna hold down option and drag it over like this and there it is boom it just stays right where it needed to be that's relative grid that's what we talked about that yesterday and that's that's when you would use relative grid that's super, super useful. Uh, what I want to talk about, though, is the whole stereo thing. Remember we talked about mono versus stereo and recording everything with mono tracks? Well, this is the perfect time to demonstrate that right here. So audio tracks, mono versus stereo. Remember, most audio tracks will be recorded in mono. You're going to record almost all your audio tracks in, in mono, right? Any kind of... Uh, any like stereo tracks really are going to be your aux tracks, instrument tracks, master track. Those are going to be stereo like 90% of the time. Mo audio tracks are going to be mono most of the time. But it comes back to that question. We talked about this yesterday. If mixes are stereo, why are most audio tracks mono? And this is a really good example of this. So here's all my, my drums, or in this case, my vocals. And my vocals here, let's go look at them like this. Here's my pan. And let me just mute these here. So here's my two main, here's one of them. Cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. Right. My, my dog, dog is cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. My dog. Right, so there we go. But if I wanted to make these stereo, watch what happens. I just pan them left and right. Cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna. Right? There we go. And it gives it a nice little stereo vibe. And then we can take these other ones and put them way out to the sides. Let's just mute these over here. Cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. Right. My dog is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. My dog is cute, y'all. My dog go. is cute, y'all. Her name is Luna, and she's really, really cute, y'all. And now, even though I'm saying the same thing with the same rhythm and the same inflections, it sounds very similar, but it's doubled up, and this is actually quadrupled up, but it's we just call this doubling, where you, and you're just doubling multiple times. And so it's all doubled up on top of itself, but we're hearing it in the stereo spectrum because eventually we're going out to this left and right here, out to our headphones or speakers or whatever. If you're listening on headphones, you're going to hear it much better. I Actually, I didn't say this before, but I highly recommend listening to all this stuff on headphones. I think you get headphones from SAE, don't you? Um, I highly, 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 highly recommend that you use headphones when you're listening, unless you're like in a nice studio environment where you get nice speakers as well. That would be good too. Uh, but it's, don't just try not to just listen on the on your iPad or your phone like speaker or whatever because you're gonna miss so much because this is an audio class right you want the best audio that you can get okay so this is what this is so mixes are stereo why are the tracks well this this allows us to put everything all these mono tracks put them around the stereo spectrum so that's why they're gonna be mono because mono is your one microphone and usually you just want one microphone on something so you'll put it mono uh, stereo later on um all right so let's go step by step through all this stuff and let's go back here let's take this and just mute. No, wait, let's turn the bass back on save that and let's go back to the other one here let's do our yep this one all right so we got our track set up so let's just do step-by-step -step recording, okay? So this is the recording setup, step-by-step -step from beginning to end. So first of all, make sure your playback engine is set correctly. In my case, I want my playback engine to say Pro Tools Aggregate I.O. Go to my playback engine, Pro Tools Aggregate I.O., great, okay? Uh, buffer size, just make sure that's a reasonable number, like 128 is the highest I would go for recording audio. So we got that, good. Next step, 
Track input settings. Your input, your output is right up here, the IO settings here, input output section. We gotta make sure that's set correctly. So in this case, and that's gonna change depending on where you are. So you just have to know if you have, I, like for example, my arrow has two microphone inputs on it. I don't use them for this because it just, I don't have space. I just use this little lavalier mic that plugs into my, my MacBook. Um, or sorry, my uh, laptop, uh, my, my Mac mini. Um, but if I had my arrow set up, I have to know a couple things. Remember, we have to know which input we're connected to and you have to know if your microphone is a condenser mic or not. If it's a condenser mic, it needs what? Phantom power, right? So we gotta make sure that if we have a condenser mic, we have the phantom power turned on and you have to know which input you're plugged into. That's something I can't tell you the answer to that question. Which one is it put plugged into? Well, you have to look and see which one that it's plugged into, okay? So I know I'm coming into external microphone number one here, but I only have one external microphone. But you can see here, I've got all these other inputs in here. So I could plug, I could have any of these. I got mic line uh, one and two, all this stuff here. So, but I'm not, I don't have anything plugged into those. So my external microphone is into here. Output is just set for output one and two. That's totally fine. Now we want to mute the track to avoid feedback. So I, I always usually, if I when in doubt, mute it first. Uh, if you know what your situation is and you know you're fine, then don't worry about muting it. But when in doubt, mute it first. And then um, engage the input monitor button. This allows you to hear whatever's playing through the track. This must be on in order to monitor the incoming audio. They changed it in Pro Tools now. You don't have to have that turned on anymore with the later versions. Or maybe I have, maybe I have something, a setting set up. But I don't think I do, but I may have turned on something at some point when I was teaching a class and I just forgot about it. Hold on, let's just see real quick if there's a uh, operation record, disable. That seems normal. Okay, yeah, I think, yeah. I do have this one turned on, which is definitely not a normal thing. I'm going to turn that uh, off. Uh, yeah, I'll turn it off for now. We'll, we'll turn it back on later. So now what I want to do is if I want to just check my audio to make sure, like I should have told you before, check, check, one, two, I should see some level bouncing around. Like if I unmute, check, hey, one, two, check, check, check. Just the reason why I push that mute button first is just to make sure that just in case there's some kind of weird thing going on that I'm not going to have a feedback loop. Invariably, it's one of those things where invariably, if you don't push that mute button, it's going to be the time that you have a feedback loop that happens and it's super annoying. So it could and annoy, it could break things. It's dangerous and annoying. All right, so I check the input monitor, make sure we're good. Okay, cool. It doesn't have to be on anymore to monitor the audio, incoming audio. Um, this is from a couple of years ago. I think they changed something in Pro Tools now to put it like back to an older way. Then the track record enable button. Engage this, engage this for any track you want to record onto. So if I want to record onto this track right here, click on that. Hey, check one, two, check, 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 check. And you notice that I do not have the I button pressed here. And again, I feel like oh, it might be something here. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, if you don't see things bouncing around, then just turn the I button on and if, then you'll see that you want to see this meter bouncing around. But this is really if you want to monitor it as well. If you don't want to monitor it, then don't worry about it. If no tracks are record enabled, Pro Tools will show you a warning message. So if I hit record with no tracks record enabled, if I go in here and I say, okay, let's record. It says, no tracks are record enabled. Not a very glamorous message, but there it is. Okay, cool. So there we go. Boom. Level setting. This is all about checking the input level. You don't want it to, you don't want it too soft, but you also don't want it to clip. The musician should play at the normal volume levels he or she will be record performing at. Don't let singers or horn players sing, play super loud for too long. Save it for the recording. Okay, so there's a couple things here. Uh, right now, I'm basically when I'm talking, I'm looking at my level over here and I'm level set, check one, two, check, 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 check. <clears throat> we do need to hear it. Hey, 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 hey. But the only reason we need to hear it really is just to make sure that there's not kind of any kind of weird, weird thing happening. Hey, hello, hey. So I could do like this, <clears throat> check one, two, but you can see I'm clipping if I do like this too much. So I want to keep it, I'm going to keep it down here. It's a little bit better not super proximity and uh, <clears throat> and just make sure that it sounds 
right. You know, you want to make sure there's no like crackling popping, that it's not like doing some kind of weird things. That's why you need to monitor it. And we're going to talk more about that next week on Monday because we're going to talk about the audience and we're going to have a whole long thing about the um, input path and the monitor path. And we're going to be really discussing that in detail. And maybe, did Kia already talk about this stuff with you? Like the input path, monitor path, level settings, all that stuff. Is this like review? Uh, I hope it is, but I, I'm not 100% sure that it would be. Somebody let me know if this is a review right now. All right, well, while I'm waiting for answers there. Uh, oh, review, okay, cool, all right, good. All right, well, it's a good review. So we got this set up and now here's, here's another thing is that you don't want your vocalist, if your vocalist is gonna be rapping and doing it with energy and gusto, you don't want them to go in and check and be like, check one, two, check, check one, two, check, 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 one, two, check, check, one, two, check. And then as soon as they start talking, they're like, yo, my name is Tony. Hey, hey, blah, 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 blah. right? You do not want that. If they're gonna be doing it like that, then you need to be checking them like that. That is a big thing that a lot of people forget about when they're in the studio, especially young engineers, because when the first time you're recording, you're not thinking about that. You're thinking about everything else because you're nervous, right? But you need to make sure that you are checking the level that they're actually going to be performing at. Now that brings us to our last point down here though, is that don't let the singers or horn players sing or play super loud for too long. You don't wanna get them tired. You wanna save it for the recording. So you wanna make sure that if they're singing a really loud section, let them just sing it for a second just to get that level and then have them play it. Of course, this brings us to another thing. If they are doing a run through of the song, record the uh, test run through, record it because you never know what could happen. It might be absolute fire and you don't wanna miss it. Some famous recordings of songs that were um, <clears throat> from a test run through. Uh, the legend has it that that song Creep from Radiohead, the vocal performance from that was actually from a, uh, uh, a sound check that they were doing for uh, levels for a different song actually. And they were just kind of playing that song. And then that, that, that take was just amazing and they used it. That's, that's what the level is. That's what the, uh, the, the, the um, what is it? The um, legend is. All right, so let's go in here. Um, yeah, so then you just record it. So let's go ahead. So that's, that's pretty much it. After you've levels checked, uh, you should be good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead over here. I'm gonna keep it muted because we don't need to hear it twice. So I'm gonna put my click on and I'm just gonna count. And this is actually today's lab, which we're gonna come back and I'm just gonna show it to you uh, step by step. But <clears throat> we're just gonna count like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Great. Hello from Europe. What is up? Oh, probably why Tom hates the song. Yeah, <laughs> Raheem, yeah. <laughs> uh, actually, their, their, their song, My Iron Lung, is about creep. I think they hate the song also just because it's so poppy. I actually do not like, I do, I'm not a huge fan of that. I love the song. I don't like their version of the song. All right, so now we go ahead and like this, and I'm gonna, let's just go ahead and, oh, let's, let's do this, turn my, there, there we go, okay. Cool, let's just hear this, I just recorded. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Great, and there it is, I just recorded that. It sounds sounds fine. All right, so that's that's that, and that's that's the recording. That's 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 all it is, you know. Just a couple things. Just make sure you're recording that stuff correctly. Now, let's let's talk about these other modes here. We talked about loop mode. We talked about regular mode. Regular mode is just loop right mode and regular mode are basically the same. Just loop will loop, and regular mode doesn't. You still have to hit the record button before you start going. But let's let's go back over here to our these notes right here. Let's talk about quick punch. Quick Punch is awesome. If you are a recording engineer, Quick Punch is the one you probably want to use most of the time. The reason why is because, uh, well, first of all, Quick Punch allows us to do this. Let's put my counting back. Let's say that, okay, this is pretty good. 
but it's there's a couple of maybe a couple of numbers that I messed up on so we can punch them in so what I can do is this I just go in here and I just say hey uh, see check one two check 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 okay so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the record I'm gonna hit play when I hit play it's gonna actually um, it's going to actually just play back what's on my track and then when I hit record it'll record my voice so let's go ahead and do this check one two hey 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 so it's gonna one, one two, two three four five six, six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen okay and even though it's different sounding here let's turn that off and let's listen to it here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right? And you can 13, hear where I punched in and punched out on it. Okay, so that's one thing that Quick Punch is useful for. Honestly, if you're gonna, what I would, like most people do these days, they just do the whole thing again and they just go and comp it later. Which again, we're gonna talk about that on uh, in a couple, like Monday, not next Monday, but the week after that. But let me just show you this really cool other thing that Quick Punch is good for. I'm gonna delete all this stuff and, okay, you, let's say in our imagination that you have a band in the studio and the band is set up and they're ready to record. Let's say it's Radiohead, and they say, okay, we're ready to record, and you go ahead and you say, okay, go. And they start playing one. Oops, let's here. Let's get the quick try. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And they're feeling it. They're into it. You know, they're like, they're like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, very Tom York, right? And then you look down and you're like, wait, I'm not recording anything. Oh, my dog liked it so much. She kicked stuff off of her table. And you look down, you're like, wait, I'm not recording anything. Ah, oh my gosh. But as long as you have quick punch enabled, I'm gonna hit the record button over oh, recording way over here. And now I hit stop. Now here's the cool thing is that I can drag this back and it turns out that quick punch was recording the audio the entire time. Everything that I didn't think I was recording was actually being recorded. Go, and they start playing. One, oops, let's, let's get the click track. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and they're feeling it. They're into it. You know, they're like, they're like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, enough of that. So, so. Everything that you were uh, recording, uh, everything that you were doing was being recorded. So my, my friends who are recording engineers, they swear by Quick Punch. Always be using Quick Punch if you're a recording engineer. Always, 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 100% of the time use Quick Punch, unless you're loop recording. Um, and then Jalen says, so it basically fills in the missing spaces. Uh, I, I, I don't know if that's how I would describe it, Jalen. Um, I wouldn't say that it fills in the missing spaces. I would say that it just allows you to punch in the recording. You, you just you can tell it to record and then stop recording and record and stop recording. If you're using that to fill in the spaces, then yes. Uh, but it's not like shuffle mode. Shuffle mode, like if remember shuffle mode, this one fills in the spaces. So if I take shuffle mode and I and I have you know if I hit delete, it it moved everything over. That's filling in the spaces for me as opposed to like slip mode which would just leave a space here <clears throat> but quick punch it just allows you to like record on the fly I think is a better description of it but if filling in the spaces is the better way for you to remember it then then yes all right so this is our um yeah, that's Quick Punch. Quick Punch, always recording, super useful. Nobody, I don't think anybody really uses it for punching in and out anymore. That was actually a tape thing back in the day, but people would use it all the time now for because it's always recording. So Quick Punch is always recording. To save a recording with Quick Punch, you must click record before you stop playback. If you stop playback first, the background recording will be lost. So for example, if I've got this over here, I'm recording and I'm in Quick Punch mode and I hit one, two, three, four, and I hit stop and I hit the record button, it didn't actually record what I'd done before. It's that that older one is just gone. So I have to, if I hit play, one, two, three, four, then I hit record, then it it will allow me to see what was previously there. Okay, so that's quick punch right there. 
Super, 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 super useful. If you are a person who's ever lost a recording because you weren't recording, then you know what I'm talking about. You'll be like, whoa, I love it. Okay. Um, the track also must be record armed. You have The track has to be record armed. That's really important for Quick Punch. All right, and then a final mode to talk about here is destructive. Right click, destructive. Destructive, I'm not sure it still works the way that it used to work. It used to be destructive, but basically, don't even worry about it. Seriously, forget it exists. Like, just don't use destructive mode. I've never seen anybody record with destructive mode anymore. Um, here, let's just let's just go ahead and hit this. Let's go ahead and use this, and then wait, let's uh, this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. There we go. <laughs> Charlie's, Freddie, we focus. We are not in. Hello, Charlie's. You're like. 10 minutes late to that conversation, dude. Freddy said hello like 20 minutes ago, man. <laughs> you don't, what are you even saying? <laughs> All right, so now if I go in here and I wanna record over like this part here, um, <clears throat> that reminds me, please remind me about this uh, in, <laughs> in Zoom. Don't engage people who are from the outside world unless they're saying normal stuff. <laughs> like if you know, don't get upset with them. They don't know what they don't know what they're stumbling into half the time. All right, so I go over here and I'm going to go in here and pre-roll. And let's pre-roll this uh, for one bar, not four bars, one bar. <clears throat> and hit record. Check, 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 check it, check, check, check it, check, 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 check. Cool. And see that it just destroyed my original uh, recording here. But I, it might be that I actually had that. Hold on, let's see, is that counting? No, nope, yep. So it recorded over that into the, see, see what that just did? I don't know if y'all, oh yeah, wow. So it just it just recorded over this part here. Let's, let's do it from right here. I'm gonna hit record and watch what happens. This will disappear and it will still be the same uh, file, but it will be gone. So watch, hit record. Yeah, I'm destroying this file. See that? Now let's listen to it. This. Yeah, I'm destroying this file. Fitty check, 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 itty check. Right? It's, it's really weird sounding. So um, it's that's destructive mode. There's no reason to use destructive mode ever. Don't don't worry about destructive mode. Don't even like don't even use it. Just use if you're recording, like I said, if you're a recording engineer and you're recording a bunch of stuff, use quick punch. Um, if you are working in your home studio and you're working with like just little sections, I recommend loop mode. I use loop mode all the time when I'm doing stuff myself or just one person. Um, I didn't even know, like when I was actually working in Japan, I didn't even know that Quick Punch did that. I'm not even sure it did that back in the day. I, I, maybe it did, maybe it didn't. Um, Cause I left Japan in 2004. So, and I didn't learn about that until maybe 2012 or so. Uh, and I remember when I first learned about it, I was just like, what are you even telling me right now? That's like amazing. So, all right. Um, I think that brings us to the end of our notes. Yeah, that brings us to the end of the notes for today. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to stop the recording.